My name is Laura Hunter. And I'm Taylor McCann. And this is The, the Leak of, of the Nation's Long Lived Secrets. Secrets. We were young, we were foolish, we were arrogant, but we were right. I believe that we are in a national crisis which justifies and requires acts of unauthorized truth telling. I'm calling for such patriotic whistleblowing to take place right now. The leak of the Pentagon Papers in 1971 is known for spreading classified information about the government when Richard M. Nixon was in office during the Vietnam War in the 60s. This was a time when Volkswagen buses, hippies, and peace signs weren't the only revolution in America, but when the peak of U.S. soldiers were in Vietnam fighting against the communists. Daniel Ellsberg, a military analyst working for the Nixon administration, was the first to realize that the U.S. was lying about their involvement in Vietnam and he was the man who started releasing content to newspapers. The leak would soon turn out to be the most record-breaking decade of news that would construct the future of the nation as we know it. The big year was 1964, when I found out what was really happening with the U.S. involvement in Vietnam and how they were keeping it from the public. I knew that their actions were not going to bring them the victory that they desperately wanted. Ellsberg was right, but why skip to the end? Let's think back to before Ellsberg's time in 1954, when Dwight D. Eisenhower was president. This is where the lies and secrecy began. <clears throat> president Eisenhower here. It was towards the end of my presidency that this whole mess started. Senator Kennedy and I pledged that we would help prevent the spread of communism by starting in Vietnam. We also said that this information would probably not be taken very well by the general public. I am John F. Kennedy. Yes, I did keep this very important, life-changing information from the public. But can I just say, I was very worried that Viet Cong was starting to gain control in the South. I couldn't tell the U.S. that. They'd be scared out of their mind. That's when I decided that our troops must get in there. I made a speech in Washington, D.C., where I said, Vietnam represents a test of American responsibility and determination in Asia. This is our offspring. We cannot abandon it. We cannot ignore its needs. After I gave this inspiring speech, I ended up sending a small task force to Vietnam to provide aid to the South Vietnamese government. I decided to continue more of a secret path. Eventually, I had to send even more American soldiers to prevent the spread of even more communism. But that's when my journey in this whole mess ended, 1963, when I was assassinated. I am President Lyndon B. Johnson, and I was elected after the assassination of the last President, Kennedy. The war was growing rapidly, so I decided to send significant amounts of soldiers into battle. In a speech I made in 1965, I stated, We fight because we must fight if we are to live in a world where every country can shape its own destiny. Why are we in South Vietnam? We are there because we have a promise to keep, and I intend to keep that promise. Nixon, there is something I must tell you. What is it, Mr. President? You will soon take my place. There is a promise that you must keep that has been kept since Eisenhower. I must continue this secret. I made a promise that I had a secret plan to end the war in Vietnam. I spoke to the American people on January 23rd, 1973. With our secret negotiations at the sensitive stage they were in during this recent period, for me to have discussed publicly our efforts to secure peace could have possibly destroyed the chances for peace. Therefore, I now know that you all understand why I have not made any public statements about these efforts. After I gave that speech, I began to bomb Cambodia. I thought that keeping the bombing secret would help the U.S. win faster, but this plan did not last long. And that's where I come in. In 1965, I joined the U.S. Department of Defense, where I was stationed in South Vietnam. I slowly began to see the imperfections in the war and realized how immoral the war in Vietnam really was. I needed to talk to President Nixon. Hello, Mr. President. What can I do for you? The U.S. may not be doing as well as you think. More bombings and more U.S. troops is not what Vietnam needs. I suggest that you start to withdraw our troops from Vietnam. <laughs> okay, okay, sir. Mr. President, this is a very serious concern. Mr. Ellsberg, my decisions are exactly what is going to win this war. Now I suggest that you never say what you learned here today. It was clear to Ellsberg that he was not allowed to spread any information about Nixon's decisions, but he knew he must do something. I realized that it was time for me to pull out those secret government documents that I had been keeping for myself while working as an analyst during the war. With the help of a few others, a man named Robert S. McNamara shared a similar frustration with me in how the government was dealing with the war. With the help of a few others, McNamara and I worked together to create around 7,000 pages of government documents and analysis on the Vietnam War. 
These documents were put together to create what was called the Pentagon Papers. Daniel Ellsberg knew that he must make the Pentagon Papers public. Over several months of attempting to get the papers to Congress, no one was listening. Over time, I started to copy more of the papers down for myself, hoping to release them somehow, someday. After Nixon bombed Cambodia, I was desperate. The only way for the American people to take notice of the papers would be if I gave them to the press, which was the biggest, most fast-spreading and significant way of communicating and understanding at the time. Daniel Ellsberg came to us with direct evidence from the Pentagon Paper Articles. We published three articles in two days, containing secret, classified information about the U.S. involvement in Vietnam. The information was completely unknown to the public, so it was a big shock when released. After the second article came out on June 14, 1971, we received a telegram from the Attorney General that said, The New York Times contains information relating to the national defense of the United States and bears top secret classification. I respectfully request that you publish no further information of this character. We responded by saying, the Times must respectfully decline the request of the Attorney General, thinking that it is in the interest of the people of this country to be informed of the content in the series of articles. The newspapers believed that they had the right to the freedom of the press. So, the New York Times published the third article the following day. After we published our third article on June 15, 1971, we were, su we were very surprised by a restraining order from the government to stop us from publishing any more Pentagon Paper articles. The official hearing on the Pentagon Papers was June 18th. The Times had originally won the case, but the government asked and was granted an extension to restrain the Times until the second hearing, which was on the 21st. But this time, it would be with the Supreme Court. Since the Times was restrained from publishing, I gave the rest of what had not been published of the Pentagon Papers to the Washington Post. And just as expected, the Post received a warning to stop publishing the classified information. But once the Post was restrained from publishing, other news companies began to jump in and talk about the topic as well. Let's see how the Supreme Court chose to end this debate. Do you promise that what you speak before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall help you God? The Times and the government said, I, I do. do. It was June 30th. 2.30 p.m. in a split vote, 6 to 3, the Supreme Court ruled the publication of the Pentagon Papers is justified under the right to freedom of the press in the First Amendment. The, the press, press had won. I was charged with up to 115 years in prison for what I did to steal and distribute the papers. This charge was eventually dropped in June of 72 on the 89th day of the trial. The leak proves that there are consequences when the government doesn't communicate with the public. For example, shortly after, the Watergate scandal showed even more secrets that the government keeps. It caused a horrible relationship between the Nixon administration and the media, especially with the Washington Post. There have also been similar conflicts between the government and the idea of freedom of the press. Specifically, former President Trump has been known to have an unfortunate relationship with the news. There have also been similar situations of the government not telling the public about information. With the most current example of the coronavirus, many people have experienced direct censorship. Some sources claim that it's just because the government is not saying the specifics that the people are asking for. Daniel Ellsberg wasn't the only person to go against the government for the right of the people. Another man, Edward Snowden, also stole government documents from the National Security Agency talking about how the government was conducting mass surveillance programs against the American public without their knowledge. He ended up releasing the content to news reporters and the press, just like Ellsberg did. The idea of freedom of the press has also presented itself in today's society. There is still no answer on how to distinguish what should and shouldn't be spoken to the American public. But the topic of the Pentagon Papers has given newspapers all around the country the encouragement to use their voice when speaking out about government or politics. The way for communication has played a large role in how we communicate through the news today. In conclusion, the leak of the Pentagon Papers was a significant event in the history of the U.S. and it affected the way news sources and government communicate information to the American public today. Thank, Thank you. you.